Welcome everyone to the confirmation questioning. We'll be starting in a few minutes. I'm going to go uh, on the other side of the building. The kids are, are waiting. Um, there's a pool going to see who gets to ask the first question. So I'm in charge of all the cash. <laughs> no, no. Um, <clears throat> just a couple notes. When they first come in, they're going to come straight up to the altar and they're going to confess the primary text of the Christian faith and speak Christian questions and their answers. Um, they have done this for years, but up until this point, it's been practicing. This is confession. They've been learning it by heart, but now they are confessing. They're confessing the creed, the Lord's Prayer, the sacrament of the altar. This is what they're confessing. So this very first thing we do, they're confessing their faith. Um, a couple other notes. Um, you, will, you will notice that, of course, the chairs are facing the altar, and they're facing me, so we're doing this. It's, it's just like it's a classroom uh, and many of us have been through this, and they're facing me for another important reason, is that I don't trust their cousins, okay? <laughs> All right? <clears throat> yeah, you know, there's a few out there, a cousin who'd be going, oh, oh, and try to get them to giggle and laugh and things like that. So they're facing me, um, so they're comfortable. And uh, one other small little note, in, in the confirmation service, where they're asked to confess the creed, and it says, do you believe in God the Father Almighty? And in the service it says, yes, I, they say the first article, say the second. They're doing that now. So in the service itself, the confirmation service, I will say, do you believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth? If so, then answer, yes, I do. And they'll answer, you know, yes, I, yes, I do. That also relieves them from carrying anything in their hands. So... Um, <clears throat> about two more minutes here and while I get them and we'll get started. We begin our confirmation questioning with the primary texts of the Christian faith. The Ten Commandments preach repentance. The Ten Commandments show us our sin and how much we need a Savior. You. The Apostles' Creed preaches the faith that saves us from our sin. The Creed shows us that God loves us and has done everything to save us from sin through Jesus Christ our Lord. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, 
The Lord's Prayer preaches the holy life. The Lord's Prayer shows us that our lives are made holy by God's word that is received and believed. We cry out to him because we believe what he has promised us. The Lord's Prayer directs us sinners where to find our help. This is the holy life of faith in Jesus Christ. Our Father. The sacrament of holy baptism regenerates sinners and makes us Christians. Baptism unites us with the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins and bestows upon us the gift of the Holy Spirit and faith in Christ. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. Confession and absolution return us to the promises of our baptism daily. Absolution strengthens our faith in Christ and gives us comfort and help against sin and temptation. The Lord Jesus. The sacrament of the altar gives us the body and blood of Christ for salvation. The Lord's Supper gives us Christ's body and blood as medicine against our sinful flesh, the sin and trouble of this world, and the temptations of the devil. This sacrament is given so that we might learn to believe that Christ, out of great love, died for our sin, and also learn from him to love God and our neighbor. Our Lord. Christian questions and their answers. Do you believe that you are a sinner? Yes, I believe it. I am a sinner. How do you know this? From the Ten Commandments, which I have not kept. Are you sorry for your sins? Yes, I am sorry that I have sinned against God. What have you deserved from God because of your sins? His wrath and displeasure, temporal death, and eternal damnation. Do you hope to be saved? Yes, that is my hope. In whom then do you trust? In my dear Lord Jesus Christ. Who is Christ? The Son of God, to God and man. How many gods are there? Only one of their three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. What has Christ done for you that you trust in him? He died for me and shed his blood for me on the cross for the forgiveness of sins. Did the Father also die for you? He did not. The Father is God only, as is the Holy Spirit. But the Son is both true God and true man. He died for me and shed his blood for me. How do you know this? From the Holy Gospel, from the words instituted in the sacrament, and by his body and blood given me as a pledge in the sacrament. Do you believe then that the true body and blood of Christ are in the sacrament? Yes, I believe it. What convinces you to believe this? The word of Christ, take me, this is my body, drink of it all of you, this is my blood. What should we do when we eat his body and drink his blood and in this way receive his pledge? We should remember and proclaim his death and in the shedding of his blood. As he taught us, this do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Why should we remember and proclaim his death? First, so that we trust and believe that no creature can make satisfaction for our sins. Only Christ, true God, and man can do that. Second, so we may learn to be glorified by Find joy and comfort in Christ alone, and through faith in him be saved. 
What motivated Christ to die and make full payment for your sins? His great love for his Father and for me and other sinners, as it is written in John 14, Romans 5, Galatians 2, and Ephesians 5. Finally, why do you wish to go to the sacrament? What should admonish and encourage a Christian to receive the sacrament frequently? First, to look at the command and the promise of Christ the Lord. Second, to put on pressing needs because of which the command, encouragement, and promise are given. But what should you do if you are not aware of this need and have no hunger and thirst for the sacrament? To such a person, no better advice can be given than this. First, he should touch his body to see if he still has flesh and blood. Then he should look around with the scriptures say of it. These questions and answers are no child's play, but they are drawn up with great earnestness of purpose by the venerable and devout Dr. Luther for both young and old. Let each one pay attention and consider it a serious matter. For as St. Paul writes to the Galatians in chapter 6, do not be deceived. God is not be mocked. Thank you. Please take your seats. Travis and Levi, could you move your chairs just a little bit towards the center? Uh, Levi, if you reach back to your left there and grab the microphone, and uh, we're going to hand it over here to Ellie. I'm not sure this is what they mean when they say ladies first, but ladies first. If I can find the right page. Now, um, we are going to begin, uh, since these young people have prepared to receive the sacrament of the altar, we are going to have them begin with the sacraments this morning. Um, Ellie, um, a sacrament. Like, there's some things that make a sacrament a sacrament. Like, what, what, what is a sacrament? A sacrament is a sacred act. Okay, it's a sacred act. All right. So, what, what are the parts of a sacrament? Okay, Institution of Christ and Visible Elements. Okay, if you'd hand that over to Travis. Travis, uh, we have the Instituted by Christ, which is a, 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 you know, a fancy way of saying Jesus said, do this, right? Um, a visible element. Let's see, let's see this here. It was on a second ago, I turned it on. Maybe. All right. Let's try that again. All right, you guys, the green light's still on there, Travis? Okay, Ellie said that a sacrament is instituted by God. In other words, Jesus said, commanded us to do it. Has a visible element. There's a, there's a third thing. What does it uh, give us? Okay, so, Travis. Follow me with the uh, primary text of the Christian faith, okay? This is my blood given and shed for you for? Forgiveness of sins. Okay, forgive. Yes, we have a base here this morning. <laughs> that, that, was, that was all right. Okay, yeah, you're right. The forgiveness of sins. Levi, um, according to that definition, right, how many sacraments are there? Two. Two. Can you tell me which those sacraments are? Sacrament of the altar and baptism. Exactly. Sacrament of the altar and the sacrament of holy baptism. Okay, Josh. All right, we said there's visible elements. Okay. So now, and we already been through, Jesus said do this with sacrament of the altar with Travis. Um, does one of the primary texts of the Christian faith tell us to go and baptize? 
uh, uh, go, into, uh, go and baptize disciples of all nations. Exactly. And who said that to us? Um, Jesus did. Jesus did. Okay, so in the sacrament of holy baptism, what is the visible element? The visible, uh, the sacrament of the altar, you said? Uh, holy baptism. Baptism, okay. Uh, water. Water, okay. Levi, in the sacrament of holy communion, what are the visible elements in the sacrament of holy communion? Bread and wine. Bread and wine. Um, Travis, now in the sacrament of holy communion, there are not just two elements, not just bread and wine, but there's two more elements. What are they? The body and blood of Christ. Exactly, the body and blood of Jesus Christ. And Ellie, um, what is given to us in the sacrament of the altar? Forgiveness of sins. <laughs> yes, the forgiveness of, of our sins. Um, let me ask you this. Um, Generally speaking, Ellie, um, who baptizes? Usually a pastor baptizes. Okay, but in the case of an emergency, can any pa uh, Christian baptize? Yes. All right. Um, Travis, how are we supposed to put the water on in baptism? Is there any God-commanded way to do it, or can we sprinkle, pour, dunk? Are they all good baptisms? There's really no set way. Okay, so if you have water sprinkled on your head, that's fine. If you are dunked, is that fine too? Yes. Yes, that is certainly fine. Um, what words are connected with the water in holy baptism? God's words. Okay, God's words. Levi, do you remember which words of God those are in the name of the? Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Um, all right, uh, Josh, who are we to baptize? Uh, anyone who seeks baptism. Okay, anyone. Generally speaking, for a baby, do we baptize them swiftly after they're born? Um, not usually. Usually it's waited to be baptized. Okay, so you might wait a week, you might wait, but we generally do that as soon as possible. But what about adults? Do we teach and then baptize for adults usually? Um, yes. Yeah. And, um, but if an adult said, no, I need to be baptized now, would we baptize them? No, we wouldn't. Not, not, not unless in an emergency. Okay, maybe in an emergency situation. And that does happen periodically. Um, but yeah, if somebody, you were right the first time. If somebody desires baptism, we want to baptize them, correct? Yes. Yes. Um, okay. What, what is, Josh, what is meant by all nations? Uh, anyone. Okay, all people. Uh, Levi. Let's see. I'm going to go down here. And let me ask you this question. Uh, in whose name were you baptized in? God. God's name. Can you be a little more specific? God the Father. God the Father, God the... Son and the Holy Spirit. God the Father, God the Son, and, and Holy Spirit. Travis, whose child have you become in the waters of holy baptism? I have become God's child. You are God's child. Um, Ellie, how does water do such wonderful and marvelous things? Water alone can't do it. It's the Word of God. Aha, so you have to combine the Word of God. So um, if your Word of God's not there, the water's just what? Just plain water. Just plain water. All right. Um, and how often should we be baptized, Ellie? Only once. Only one time. And Travis, whose work is baptism? Is it your work or is it God's work? Uh, it is God's work. Exactly. Let's see. I'm going to go down a little farther. Um, let me change it here. Uh, Ah, Levi, according to the primary text of the Christian faith, who instituted the sacrament of Holy Communion? Jesus Christ. Yes, Jesus did. Um, Josh, what elements are present in the sacrament of the altar? Um, Jesus' word, wait, I, I'm sorry. Um, 
Bread, wine, body, blood. Bread, wine, body, and blood. Um, so when you receive the, the host, the bread, what are you also receiving with that? You're also receiving his body. You're also receiving Christ's body. And the same would go for the wine, then you're also receiving Christ's blood? Yes. Yes. Um, let's see. How often... See, now you wanted to hand that off, so I got to ask you another question. <laughs> okay. All right. How often should we receive the sacrament of the altar? Uh, as often as you like. like okay. Chur- like our church does it every other week. We okay. Take it every week. Right. So there's no, no command other than do this as often as you drink it. Drink it in remembrance of me. Okay. Uh, I will let you hand that to Levi now. Um, what do you receive in the sacrament of the altar, Levi? Eternal life. Ah, eternal life. Because the sacrament of the altar gives us the forgiveness of what? Sins. Forgiveness of our sins. So, Travis, you know where I'm going with this. The wages of sin is? Wages of sin is death. But the gift of God? Is eternal life. Okay, Ellie. So then, if sin is taken away... What's left? Eternal life. Eternal life is left. So when you receive the sacrament of the altar, you receive? Eternal life. Eternal life. All right. Um, Is there any reason, Ellie, that you should ever, when you receive the sacrament of the altar, waver on whether or not your sins are forgiven? No. No. Now, what what if your sins have really burdened you and they're really weighing on you? Is, is that a time to like wait till you're right with God to take communion? No, that's the best time to take communion. Okay, that is the best time to take communion. Um, Travis, let's see. If you believe and trust that Christ's body and blood is truly in with and under the bread and wine, is that what it takes to be a worthy communicant? Let's think of our Christian questions and their answers. Do you believe Christ's body and blood is in in the sacrament? Yes. Okay. All right. Who told you his body and blood is there? Jesus did. Exactly. Jesus did. So could we trust Jesus' word? Yes. All right. We trust Jesus' word. Levi. Um... All right, let's see. So, at the sacrament of the altar, we have already established you're receiving Christ's body and blood. You're receiving, um, how many elements is it again? Four. What are those elements? Bread and wine, body and blood. Bread, wine, body, blood. And Josh, what are you receiving those elements for? To forgive your sins. Forgiveness of our sins. All right, I am going to make a jump to another topic here. Um, let's see. What book, Josh, is the source of all Christian teaching and doctrine? The Bible. The Bible. Okay, Levi. Um, I want you to tell me, okay, there's two main teachings and two main divisions or two main parts of the Bible. What are the two main teachings of the Bible? Sacrament of the altar. Which is gospel. So you've got gospel, and then there's the law, the law which is encapsulated in, in what words? What do we call where we find the law in its basic form? Confession of sins. Okay, confession of sins. And Travis, where do we find the law in its basic form? It's the very first thing in the primary text of the Christian faith. The Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments. All right. Um, Ellie, they have said what are the two main teachings, which are law and gospel? What are the two main divisions in the Scripture? The Old and New Testaments. Okay, and in general, the Old Testament promises what? That the Savior is coming. 
And the New Testament tells us what? That the Savior has come. The Savior has come. Um, let's see here. What is the good news? The gospel of Jesus Christ. Okay, that Jesus is what? That Jesus is our Savior. That Jesus is our Savior. Um, okay, Travis, using the acronym SOS, okay, the, old, the law shows our what? It shows us our sins. And the gospel shows? Shows us our Savior. Shows our Savior, very good. Um, let's see. What, Levi, is the law? What does it tell us? Tells us that we sinned. Okay, that, that we have sinned. Does it tell you what you should do? Yes. Does it tell you what you shouldn't do? Yes. Okay, so it tells us what we shouldn't. What are the three uses of the law? Shows our sin. So I'll start you off with a curb. You know, curbs violent outbursts of sin. Then we look into it. It is a mirror. Okay, and then it tells us how we should live. That is our life. Okay, our guide, right, our guide. Curb mirror, guide, curb mirror, rule, something to that uh, effect, depend on, you know, what, you know, your home pastor, how the home pastor sent it to you. If you would pass that off to Joshua. Um, Josh, there are two tables of the law. First three, and the next seven, right? First three commandments. Um, First three commandments, tell us about our relationship to who? God. A relationship to God, so we have a vertical relationship there. The next seven commandments, tell us about our relationship to who? Our neighbor. To our neighbor, very good. Um, let's see. Who, of course, obviously God gave the law not to eat of the tree of the garden of good and evil, you know, or not to eat the tree of uh, life. So he gave the law there. Um, through whom did God give the law on Mount Sinai? Uh, Moses. He gave the law through Moses. And the first, the requirement of the first table of the law is to love what? Uh, oh, um, to love God. Love God, okay. Levi. The next second table of the law is to love who? God. Neighbor. Neighbor, okay. Um, Travis. How many commands do we have that tell us what to do? Uh, ten. Ten. Ten commandments. Okay, Ellie, what is, uh, if you're going to summarize the law, what is the summary of the law? Love God and love your neighbor. Love God. and So one word summary of the entire law is what? Love. Love. All right. Let's see. Um, Ellie. Which God is the true God? The triune God, Father, the, Son, and Holy Spirit. Okay, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Travis, what does the word triune mean? Three and one and one and three. Three and one, one and three. Um, <laughs> Levi, is this something we can fully understand? No. Yeah, you're correct. It is something we cannot fully understand. Um, let's see, I'm gonna flip over, oh, okay, there we go. Joshua. Okay, in the primary text of the Christian faith, we have, we confess the Apostles' Creed, right? What does the word creed mean? It means a belief. Okay, a belief, and um, in the Apostles' Creed, who is stating a belief in the Apostles' Creed? I am. You are, exactly. Um, so, is it fair to say the Creed is you stating your own faith? Yes. All right, can, uh, Levi, can anyone believe for you? No. No, who must believe for you? Myself. You and yourself. Um, Travis. Um, is your faith your work, or is it a work of the Holy Spirit? It is the work of the Holy Spirit. Exactly. It's a work of the Holy Spirit. Um, okay, Ellie. 
Let's see here. We commonly use three different creeds. In communion service, we use the Nicene Creed. That leaves what other two creeds? The Apostles' Creed and the Athanasian Creed. Do you know what Sunday we usually use the Athanasian Creed on? Trinity Sunday. Trinity Sunday, very good. Um, Let's see here. Why is the creed broken into three articles? What are the three articles about? The three articles are about the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Um, Travis, what work is ascribed, given in the creed to God the Father? Maker of all heaven and earth. All right, maker of all heaven and earth. So Levi, that brings us to the second article of the Apostles' Creed. Who is the second article of the Apostles' Creed about? Jesus. Exactly, Jesus and Josh. Third article of the Apostles' Creed points us to which person of the Holy Trinity? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Um, All right, so why do we say in the Creed, Josh, um, I believe and not we believe? Because you can't talk for anyone else. All right, so you cannot confess or believe for somebody else. Um, Let's see. What do we understand and, and mean when we say maker of heaven and earth? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. So those are the things we can... Believe. Okay, we believe. Uh, the earth is the things we can see, right? Yes. So if it's the things we can see are earth, then what are the... Th- in heaven, the things are the things we... Don't see. We don't see, right? We do not see them. Um, Levi. Can you tell me what the name... Jesus means? Savior. Savior. Travis, is Christ then his last name or is that more of a title for him? It's more of a title. It is more of a title for him. Who would uh, Jesus' earthly father be then? Like, did Jesus have a father in the same way you and I do? Or was he conceived by the Holy Spirit? He was conceived by the Holy Spirit. Okay. Ellie, who would uh, Jesus' earthly, his adoptive father be? Joseph. His adoptive father would be Joseph. Um, Christ, then, is a title that means what? One who saves. Okay, that's Jesus is one who saves. Christ is the? Anointed one. The anointed one, all right, and the Messiah. Either one would be certainly fine. Um... Jesus Christ is two things that are true at the exact same time. He is true what? He's true man and true God. True man and true God. Um, Why was it necessary for Jesus to be true God? So that he could make atonement for all the sins in the world. Exactly. Travis, um, what has Christ done for you that you trust in him? He died for me and shed his blood for me on the cross for the forgiveness of sin. Excellent. Um, Levi. Right. According to the creed, okay, there are, we, we can see them as two stair steps. Okay. Going down and going up. The stair steps going down is either Christ's humiliation or his exaltation. Which one is it? Christ's humiliation. Okay, the stair steps going up would be his? Exaltation. Okay, Josh, what are the steps of Christ's humiliation? Um, He was conceived. By the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. Okay, well, let's stop there. (laughs) Okay, all right. Well, because we're going to get there, because then we start the steps of exaltation, right? The steps that we got buried, and then he... Uh, he ascended into heaven. Before he ascended into heaven. Oh, he, he, he descended into hell. Descended into hell. Okay, so we, we, why is that not part of humiliation? What did Jesus go to hell for? To suffer more? Oh, no, he went to hell to um, 
of defeat the devil. Yeah, yeah, I mean, his defeat of the devil, right there. What, um, random question to the four of you. What did Jesus say from the cross that lets us know that everything needed for our salvation is done? It is finished. There we go, in unison, it is finished. Okay, so everything needed for our salvation was done by Jesus on the cross. So he goes to hell to not pay for our sins, but to proclaim our victory, right? Yes. All right, to proclaim the victory. Um, let's see. Tra uh, Levi, why did Jesus die on the cross? What was he doing when he died on the cross? To save us from sin. All right, to save us from our sins, right? He was bearing the sins of the world in his flesh, right? Yeah. Very good. Um, Travis, what price did Jesus pay for your redemption? He paid for us with his life. Okay, he gave his life for us. He shed his blood for us. Um, I'm going to do some more flipping here. I'm going to tell you, they did not go this fast in practice. <laughs> I'm like, oh my goodness, you're just doing a great job here. Um, let's see. All right, first commandment, Ellie. All right, you shall have no other gods. What is God forbidding us to do in the first commandment? To make any idols and worship anyone besides him. Exactly. Um, Travis, has any person kept the commandments perfectly? Uh, no. No, no, no human being has kept the commandments perfectly. But what one individual has kept them perfectly? Uh, Christ has. Christ has kept them perfectly. Um, oh, yes, okay. All right, you had the curb mirror rule earlier, okay. Now, Levi, there are two main groups of sin. Okay, what are the two main groupings of sin? Original sin and natural sin. Okay, original sin and natural sin. Josh, what is original sin? Uh, the sin you were born with. The sin you were born with. And Levi, what is actual sin? The sin that you do. Okay, the sins that we actually commit exactly um and i you know i i want you to know i worked that around because i know levi has a sister and an actual in class we we say you know an actual sin is like punching your sibling in the head which he would never do okay so no we wouldn't do that but that is an example of an actual sin Okay, uh, pass that off to uh, Travis. Uh, Travis, who's the only true God? God the Father. Keep going. God the Son and the Holy Spirit. Okay, um, second commandment. We're not to misuse the name of the Lord your God. Um, let's see. Um, are we to swear by God's name? Uh, no. No, uh, we are not to swear by God's name. We're not to curse by God's name. Um, Ellie, okay. You shall not murder. Right okay. now, we make a, a point of saying the difference between kill and murder. Is there a difference between those two things? Yes, there's a difference. All right, what is the difference between them? Killing can be justified if it's like a war or capital punishment, but murder can't. Okay, so who has God given the authority to take life to? Governments. God has given governments authority to take life. So if somebody goes through due process in the court system and they receive a death penalty for their sins, right, that is not violating the Ten Commandments, is it? Correct. Correct, all right. Um, Travis, on that, on that same way, okay, a soldier, sailor, airman, marine, has a Coast Guardsman, they have the authority to take life by the government, correct? Yes. Okay, but what if somebody's um, surrendered in a battle and the soldier 
shoots them after they surrender. Would that be killing or murder? That would be murder. That would be murder. Okay, so we do ask a lot of our uh, law enforcement corrections and um, military personnel to take their emotions and make sure they use them in the right and proper way. Um, okay, let's see here. Who has filled, fulfilled the will and law of God perfectly, Levi? Jesus. Okay, Jesus Christ has. Let's see. God created, okay, go back to the first article of the creed. God created um, angels. You remember what the, the title angel means? God's servant. Okay, God's servant, God's messenger, so to speak, right? Okay, so angel is God's, God's messenger. Um, Josh, who are devils or demons then? Fallen angels. They are fallen angels. And there are fallen angels and good angels. What do the good angels do? They give, well, they're messengers, uh, messengers so they give uh, good news, such as like Mary. Oh, yes, like, exactly. To Mary. Good news, such as, as to Mary. Fear not, for behold, I bring you great good, joy. Yep, yeah, good tidings of great joy. Uh, wonderful. All right, let's see here. Um, Christ humbled himself in death in, in order to save me a. Poor, miserable sinner. Poor, miserable sinner, a lost and condemned person. Um, okay, I'm going to give you one more. Okay. Yeah, see if we can get one more for each of us, okay? Um, vicarious atonement. Well, that's a big fancy word, and it means Jesus died in whose place? My place. Exactly. Um, okay, I lied. I'll give you one more. Okay, all right. Um, you're preparing to take the sacrament of the altar. And pastor stands up and says, given and shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. How are you gonna change those words around in your head? Given and shed for me. Okay, Levi, the same question. You hear given and shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. How are you turning that around in your head? Given and shed for me for the forgiveness of sins. Travis? Given and shed for you, for the forgiveness of your sins, is turned around in your head to what? Given and shed for me. For me. And Ellie, the same question. Given and shed for you, for the forgiveness of your sins, is turned around in your head to what? Given and shed for me. Given and shed for me. All right. Thank you very much. If you would turn that microphone uh, upside down and, and shut it off. Okay. All right, is it off? It's red? Okay. Um, that's good enough for right now. Um, I would like to thank all of you for listening to the confirmation questioning this morning. Um, I would like to ask you, I think they did a fine job, I'd like to ask you to give them a round of applause for their <laughs> confession this morning. Confirmands, thank you very much. I'm going to ask a couple things before we retire to the coat room. First, I want to remind or ask the moms, right? Dad's going to leave you out of this one. Uh, but moms, if you could come back to the coat room and help put flowers on ropes, uh, we'd appreciate that very, very much. Um, we have a break before second service. Now is the time to stretch your legs or uh, use the facilities. Um, and you don't have to stay in that spot to, uh, for, for church, but if you want to get a, to move around a little bit, that's certainly, certainly fine. Ladies and gentlemen, elders, if you would, would you put the chairs, chairs back? Um, ladies and gentlemen, if you would retire to the coat room, and we'll get our robes ready and flowers. <laughs>